Hey guys, it's myself here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about iOS 14.5 developer and public beta 2. This is going to be my follow-up video where I talk about battery performance, bugs, new features and changes or additional new features and changes, as well as the YouTube community poll where you guys provide feedback on how the software has been working for you. The first thing I want to talk about is number one, this is out available for public beta testers in case you did not know. So beta 2 for iOS 14.5 is now available for developers and public beta testers alike. So the first thing I want to talk about is Apple Music and the controls within Apple Music. And if you didn't catch my initial coverage, there's quite a bit of improvements here. So for example, now if you click on these three dots here, the menus pop up within in the actual buttons and controls there. So it looks a lot nicer than beta one and previous software as well. But you see there's a new interface as well for sharing lyrics. So if you share lyrics, you see the entire lyrics for a song and you can share these with anyone. It's a really cool feature to share particular portions of songs and things like that. There's also swiping gestures, very similar to notes and messages. So if you swipe to the left, you can cue to the last song or cue it to the first song, depending on which one you click. So if you click the blue one, play next. If you click the yellow one, that's gonna play last. That one's not working properly, as you can see there. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it is beta software. Now, if you swipe to the right, you can delete or download the song as well. So Apple is definitely improving the user interface and controls within the music application by adding new swiping gestures, new menu pop-ups and controls, different UI and lyric sharing. It's really, really cool. Now there's also additional shortcuts and abilities that you can add to your shortcuts by taking screenshots, uh, enabling or disabling orientation lock and setting the voice in data mode to 5G on primary. So that's really cool. Apple continues to expand on the shortcuts and the shortcuts abilities here for iPhone. Now, one thing that I've noticed with iOS 14.5 developer beta two is that paging editing and newly downloading apps now go directly to the app library. So if you download an app, it goes directly here. It doesn't go back default to the home screen as it was before. Now you can change that by going into home settings right here and changing that back to home screen. But now default is app library and you get that pop-up that you see right here telling you that the apps that you now download from the app store would actually go to the app library which is kind of weird i don't like that much now there's also updates here to reminders now you can sort the reminders here so you have the ability to sort by title due date and of course more options are available there so i'm happy to see that and i use reminders every single day and you can now print your list as well and take it with you so this is a new splash screen here for the reminders application on the latest iOS 14.5 beta 2. Now, aside from that, I also like to talk about my personal experience and the YouTube community post. So let's head on over to YouTube here and take a look at the YouTube community post. So there we go. How is iOS 14.5 developer and public beta 2 working for you? There's actually a typo there. You guys notice that very, very quickly. Now we have 5,900 votes in a matter of about two days here. And a 22% of you guys are having a great experience so far. 4% of you guys, say there's too many bugs. Now, if you do encounter any bugs, please leave them in the comments down below of this uh, actual video and the actual YouTube community poll with the device that you're occurring these bugs on. And some of you guys, 5% are having some bugs, just not that many. 2% of you guys is a terrible experience and a whopping 67% of you guys are simply not running the software. Now, one of the bigger complaints here is the new feature for Apple Watch and mask detection to unlock with Apple Watch. Now, many of you guys are reporting that this uh, software feature is not working properly. Now, I can say that I had some issues in beta two as of right now. It isn't working as it was in beta one, but it is working for me. But yeah, it is a little bit hit or miss on the latest beta. So hopefully Apple continues to approve on that. So now some of you guys are also reporting issues with the AirPods Pro disconnecting from Bluetooth. Now I noticed that on the AirPods Max, I tweeted about that. I had to resync my AirPods Max to the uh, iPhone after updating to beta one and beta two. So yeah, Bluetooth issues specifically with AirPods on the latest beta. Now after updating here, some of you guys are reporting that the battery health on your iPhone has dropped a 1% as you can see here from 95 to 94. Now I do wanna address this because every time you update your software, this could happen. It won't happen every time, but this could happen when you update your software because iOS does several checks to make sure that the information and data provided is accurate. And one of those checks is actually battery health. And another popular comment was one of the typos here, as I mentioned right there on the YouTube community poll for the word 
public. But there you guys have it. You guys can come back to these YouTube community polls every week. They're posted as Apple releases new software, beta software, and or official software. You can come back, read some of the comments, express your thoughts, votes, and that way you can understand and see if anybody else is having issues on a particular situation or feature. And that way everyone gets a bigger understanding or a bigger picture and a better understanding on how the software has been performing. Now, so far in regards to battery, I do want to talk about the battery because I've continued to test iPhone SE, our first generation, iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, 7 and 7 Plus. I do have to say, 7 and 7 plus i do see minor improvements within the, the battery department although there's still some issues with the battery still testing those devices more information to come in regards to that iphone 6s and 6s plus also improved as well but the iphone se first generation just continues to struggle and i'll have a separate video in regards to the battery as more betas become available but just keep in mind se first generation battery is still bad as before iphone 7 7 plus it's sort of fixed, but not really. It's getting there. iPhone 6S and 6S Plus is well, kind of getting there, but not fixed completely. And that about brings it into this video. This was my follow-up on iOS 14.5. My experience has been really good on the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro Max, my primary devices using every day. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.